No surprise, the IMF cut its numbers for this year and next. Uh, the official forecast uh, is shown in red here, 3.3% uh, for this year, which is a downgrade of about two-tenths of a point from what they had previously been forecasting, uh, and 3.6% <coughs> for next year, which is a downgrade of about th three-tenths of a point. You might say, well, 3.2, 3.6, not a bad, you know, deal. I mean, you know, sign me up. Um, but <coughs> that's why we put in a couple of lines here on this slide to try to put this forecast uh, in context. You'll note, for starters, the green line is the average um, since 1970. So it's a, you know, 40, uh, well, I guess it's a, it's a 37 year average because we uh, took the average through 2007 not to let it <coughs> get distorted by, you know, this mess in here. And <coughs> relative to the average, you know, this is not a great forecast. Um, th this year's number is three-tenths of a point <coughs> uh, below average, and <coughs> next year's number is equal to, to, to the average. So, you know, there are lots of years when it's above the, the green line, lots of years when it's below it, but, you know, this is sort of a, a ho-hum average forecast, which is right away, you know, a bit, bit disconcerting because, you know, we had this outlier here in 2009, the first drop uh, in global growth uh, in modern times, and we did have a rebound in 2010, but we've qu quickly settled into, you know, sort of an average growth channel. Normally when you go into recession, you expect, you know, a big recovery that gets, gets you back, and I'll show you uh, how that works. Uh, in a second. Uh, the global economy, other than 2009, when it goes into recession, really doesn't contract. It's, you know, it's a, a big, broad, diverse uh, global economy with, you know, 200 some odd uh, countries, um, the broad collection of which normally um, uh, on aggregate expands. And what those of us who have <coughs> followed global business cycles for a long time uh, have used is sort of an unofficial uh, uh, metric that defines, delineates uh, a global recession threshold at about two and a half percent. So anytime the growth rate for the world as a whole slows in a meaningful way for a protracted period of time below two and a half percent, we we tend to conclude that's a global recession. So you can see mid-70s, 74, 75, uh, early 80s, especially 81, 82, and again, early 90s, Asian financial crisis, late 90s, and then, you know, the mother of all uh, recessions uh, in 2009 are typically known uh, as global uh, downturns. I've highlighted just a few of the what I think are really interesting <coughs> um, pieces of the estimate for this year um, for the advanced economies of the world, the US, Europe, Japan, Canada, um, it's really a, a, a very depressing estimate for this year. 1.3% is what I would call <coughs> close to the stall speed uh, of a major economy, which means you're, you're barely cruising above the runway, and if, you know, if you hit something bad, you know, bad weather, a lot of birds, you know, probably go down again. Uh, so it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not a really strong uh, outlook for the advanced world. The developed world, especially developing Asia, Huge source of resilience. If you do the math and back out the 24% of world GDP that goes to developing Asia, subtract it from the 3.3, three, you get the world X developing Asia 2.2, two, which is actually below our 2.5% uh, recession uh, threshold. 
So if there's one part of the world that is, is making a difference between uh, a global economy that's expanding and in recession, uh, it's <coughs> developing Asia. Do the same exercise with, with China, um, and you know China accounts for the bulk of developing Asia's growth dynamic. It puts you right at the two and a half percent make or break line between recession and expansion. And, and the question <coughs> that I ask, and I, and I just asked it in in my uh, China class uh, this morning. Any, are any of you in my China class? Oh, good. I'll, I'll call on you to answer it then. Uh, <laughs> is how can uh, you know this export-led region, export-led China, uh, continue to grow uh, in the face of weakness in its major external markets in the advanced world? I mean, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a second. But it, but there's some clear anomalies in the mix of the global economy that are highlighted by this forecast. And then the final thing, I don't have a lot of charts, just these two. Um, that try to draw this article out in a little bit um, deeper context is <coughs> this is a great way to put <coughs> this forecast in the context of some of the trends that I've already alluded to. Uh, at the top are the actual <coughs> numbers, um, <coughs> last four years, and uh, the forecast and estimates for this year and next. Uh, and we subtract them from the green line, the trend, to get the deviations from the trend. And you just can see right off the bat that of the six years we've got up there, only two of the years are above trend. The final year, 2013, is equal to the trend. But I mean, you know, four out of six years to be equal or below trend. And of course, here, sharply below trend is, is pretty astonishing in terms of what it says for uh, the state of the global economy. And the arithmetic I've done at the bottom sort of drives the most important point home. We had a five percentage point shortfall in 08 and 09 from the trend. We recouped only 1.7 percentage points of that in 2010 and 11. And now we're sort of treading water or slipping again. So by the end of 2013, by this calculus or arithmetic, um, you know, the shortfall from trend is 3.3 is percentage points. Big degree of slack in the global economy. And for export-led, uh, dynamically growing economies, as we see in China, <coughs> uh, elsewhere in, in Asia, very challenging conclusion. So it, it's a it, it's it's a tough outlook, and the IMF is you know they're warning the Europeans, and they're war you know about this um, you know the uh, the European sovereign debt crisis and the need to really activate and be aggressive in um, uh, using their um, stability mechanism to support Europe. They're warning you know, Washington, you know, do not, under any circumstances, uh, push you know, America off the fiscal cliff. Uh, they, you know, they warn everybody. Uh, sort of they don't warn themselves that maybe they have a role to play in this, but you know, that's, that's, that's another story for another day. Um, but but it's, it's, a, um, it's, it's a tough uh, uh, global outlook.